Hello and welcome to your first training video on making MEA plus YE media. My name is Julian Lieber. Malt extract agar plus yeast extract is abbreviated as MEA plus YE. Malt extract is the first ingredient of this, which is derived from the germinated seeds of barley and is the product used as the base for most beer. It is also a carbon source providing sugars. Yeast extract provides nutrients and is commonly used as a food supplement for the same reason. Agar is a gelling agent derived from seaweed. It allows us to make the media solid uh, which is helpful for many manipulations of fungal cultures. The recipe for this is 1% malt extract, 1% agar, and 0.1% yeast extract. These percentages are expressed as weight per volume. So for 500 milliliters, or 0.5 liters volume, we will need to calculate how much of each ingredient we need. 500 milliliters times one gram per milliliter, that is the weight per volume conversion, times the percentage expressed as a proportion, will give us five grams of malt extract, and the same for agar, because these are the same proportion by weight. We can use the same conversion for the yeast extract, but by multiplying by a different proportion. This gives us 0 0.5 grams of yeast extract. The first thing to do when going into lab is to make sure that we have bottles to use. There are two styles. This one has a plastic ring around it for easy pouring, which we will not need for this uh, style of making media. And the other one does not. These are the two styles shown. We'll be using the one on the left today. So there are several, or there are three ingredients we need. So malt extract, which comes from the fridge door in the Benito lab, agar, and yeast extract. Here they are shown up close. Next, we will need a weighing dish in which we're going to put the ingredients to weigh them out. These can be found under the bench. The first one, Bacto agar, already has a scoop in it and is kept in an airtight jar. We're going to tear it again, and we're going to fill it up. This is sped up to make it go a little bit faster. We are aiming to get within one to two hundredths of a gram. Once we are within that range, we're going to pour it in, folding the dish in half to make it uh, fit into the bottle a little bit easier. And then this is going to get thrown away. Next, we're going to do malt extract. Trade the scale again with the new weighing dish. Fill it up. Malt extract can be uh, somewhat sticky, so make sure to wash your hands afterwards. Again, pour it into the container, throw your weighing dish away. Now for the yeast extract, we are going to use a weighing paper because it is a smaller amount. I like to pinch the corner to make it easier to handle. Remember to tear your scale. It's okay to put a little bit back in the container, especially in this case if you're using a clean um, weighing dish or paper. Now we're going to need a magnet, which can again be found under the bench. And these is, this is used to help stir the solution in a sterile manner. Okay, now we need water. For these bottles, we don't want to fill them above the 500 milliliter line, uh, like all the way up to the top, because that it makes them more likely to spill over in the autoclave. We're going to be using double distilled, or DD, water, or H2O, 
Uh, and this is derived from the Milliki machine, which we'll show you how to use in a later video. The graduated cylinders next to the water are okay to use only for that water. Once it starts getting close, I like to look down at about level uh, and get it just right at 500 milliliters. Even though volumes are not additive, it is okay that you may end up with a little bit more volume than 500 milliliters. After that, we're going to replace the cap and make sure to stir it. It must be in the center. If the magnet starts bouncing around, turn off the stirring and restart. Now we need to put autoclave tape on it. This tape changes color once it's been autoclaved, and there's two different kinds. We're going to use this kind. I'm just going to tear a piece and fold over the end. This is sped up. This allows it to be put down on a surface and picked up more easily. I'm going to write the media type on the bottle or on the piece of tape and then apply the tape to the bottle across the seal line. Once the bottle has been opened, we will know that it has, uh, we'll place the tape on top. We want to make sure that the lid has some wiggle so that it does not explode in the autoclave. Then we're going to label the autoclave bin, their lab, the, lab, the autoclave cycle, in this case two, and your name abbreviation or your initials. Place both bottles in. Now they're going to go down to the autoclave. Try not to hit the doors like I do. This is what the autoclave looks like when it's done. So we want to make sure to use a lot of force when trying to open it, but then also catch it at the bottom to make sure it does not slam. Anytime we open the autoclave after a cycle is complete, we want to make sure to use gloves to remove the load and also stand back from the door to avoid steam. Check that the bottles have a little bit of wiggle on their caps. And close it, making sure to not slam the door at the top. Now we want to see which cycle we're going to use, and we're waiting for the ready button, which is not yet. So the jacket temperature needs to reach about 116 degrees Celsius. It's currently at 97.6. So we're selecting cycle number two, which is 24 minute sterilization. This is okay to use for most media and liquids, but not biohazard waste. So now we need to wait for the temperature to go up and see we're almost there. The ready light has come on and we can press the start button. 